Hi, welcome to this episode of Nikon D5200 Photography Tips and Tricks. This video is about your Nikon D5200 camera settings and what to do with them when you finish shooting for the end of the day. What I'm about to tell you is going to be extremely useful. Don't go away. Hi, Barry Callister for Barry Callister Photography, giving you hints, tips and tricks for better nature photography. On this channel I do gear reviews, camera tutorials, Lightroom and Photoshop tutorials and so much more. If it's your first time here, please consider subscribing. Let's jump into this Nikon D5200 camera settings tip. This is going to blow your mind and make sure that you don't miss some really good shots. Let's get into it. For more information about any of the gear you see me using in the video today or if you want to purchase, there are links in the video description below. Now, when you're out taking photos all day long, your camera settings are going to change quite a lot, obviously, because you're going to be photographing different things, the light's going to be changing, etc, etc. For example, you might start out taking photos of birds. And then you might photograph some flowers. You might take a few awesome landscapes. Then you might end up at a lake. And at the end of the day, take an awesome sunset. When you finish doing all that, you pack up your photo gear, you pop it into the car, and you head off home to check out all the brilliant photos that you've taken over the day. When you get home, you might upload your photos to the computer. Maybe do a few edits in Lightroom. The next morning, you're sitting at the breakfast table eating your breakfast and a bald eagle lands right outside the window. Oh my God. So you freak out, rush off to grab your camera. <laughs> bald, bald eagle in Australia. <laughs> you run outside like a crazy person, fumble around with your camera, click off a few shots. And then you stand there triumphantly, thinking you've got the wildlife shot of the year. <sighs> yes. When you check your photos on your camera, however, what? they're all what? black. What? What? No! Okay, so let's have a look at a way that we can stop that from happening. Now at the end of every day, if I've been out shooting all day long, I will reset my camera settings to a default or a home base. Somewhere I know that it may not be the perfect settings I'll need for that spur of the moment shot in the next morning. I mean, how can you tell? You don't know what might jump out at you. But I know that the perfect settings will only be a couple of button presses or a few dial turns away. So what I will do generally is I will set my aperture to f8, my ISO to 400, and my shutter speed to 1 320th, 1 250th of a second. If I've got my 55 to 200 mil lens on, if I've got my 18 to 55 on here, I'll set it to 1 60th of a second. I just make sure that it's equal to or larger than the focal length of the lens. So those are my default settings there, my main ones. I also make sure that my white balance is reset back to daylight if I've changed it. I use my white balance on daylight quite a lot because it works in most outside situations. It works and of course you can change it in post these days anyway so it's no big deal. Um, but I always set it that back to daylight. Now with my focus mode too I make sure that is reset to AFC because I use AFC quite a lot to take photos of stationary subjects as well. It's uh, really good to do that and then if they start moving all of a sudden I'm set to get them as well. And make sure if you're using a lens like this Nikkor 18 to 55 that's got a auto or manual focus switch on the side, make sure you reset that back to auto if you're doing your focus this way. So yeah, I set mine to AFC or continuous servo AF. So there you go. That is going to make sure that you possibly don't miss out on that wildlife shot of the year the next morning. So at the end of every day, reset your camera settings back to a default. Find one that suits you because you know what settings you generally use a lot of the time. 
So be sure to check out the links in the video description below for more information on all the gear you've seen me using in the video today. And make sure that you hit that subscribe button if you don't want to miss more videos like this one. I'm Barry Callister for Barry Callister Photography. Get out there, take that wildlife shot of the year, and I'll see you soon. You